I've always liked Halloween. I loved to trick or treat as a kid, and as an adult, I enjoyed watching horror movies with friends and carving pumpkins. A couple of years, my buddies even convinced me to go to a haunted house with them. It was a fun night just about every year, and I always looked forward to it. But I don't go out on Halloween anymore. I stay inside, with the blinds shut and the lights off, and I think you'll understand why. This all started three years ago, on October 30th. I was talking on my phone with a friend of mine who, for the sake of privacy, I'll call Jake. Jake was unpredictable, which was usually fun, but sometimes got us into trouble, which is why when he invited me to a Halloween party that a good friend of his was throwing, I was a bit hesitant. Come on, man, what else are you going to do tomorrow? You already said you didn't have plans, he persuaded. Jake had a point. I've never really been one for getting drunk or partying. But then again, I've never really been one for sitting at home by myself all night either. All of my other friends already had plans, and this might have been my only chance to get out on Halloween. As I weighed my options in my head, Jake let out a final... Well? I gave a short sigh and smiled. Yeah, sure. I'll go, I said. Jake excitedly assured me that it'd be fun, and told me that he'd pick me up at 8 the next night. Driving to that party the next day, I couldn't help but feel a bit anxious. I didn't know anybody there except for Jake, but knowing one person at a party is a lot better than knowing nobody at a party. Jake made me feel a lot more comfortable than I'd be alone. I was going as Jack from The Shining, and Jake was going as Slash from Guns N' Roses. You ready to rock? He joked as we pulled up at the house. I nodded as we exited the car and walked into the house. The aroma of alcohol hovered heavily over the room like fog, and beneath it the smell of marijuana flowed lightly through the house. In some rooms, it seemed like there was a body for every square foot. Music blasted throughout the house, and I couldn't tell if the music or the talking was louder. Jake introduced me to the guy who was throwing the party, who I'll call Mitch. We chatted for a bit, but it was only minutes before me and Jake were going over to get beers. I didn't like to get drunk, but two light beers didn't do all that much besides helping me relax. The party just kind of dragged on, like a mediocre movie that you're only half paying attention to. Jake was with me throughout, though I could tell he was a lot more drunk and having a lot more fun than I was. And after about two hours, I was getting bored. The constant noise and uncomfortable heat from the crowd wore me down as well. The moon was big that night, and it showed enough that I had a faint shadow. After walking several blocks, I noticed a forest to my left, one that extends all the way to my house so I decided to cut through it to get home faster. It was strange, but something felt a little bit, well, off about it. I quickly shook that feeling off, however, deciding that it was nothing. The moon was casting faint shadows of the tree's long, thin branches. Brown and orange leaves littered the ground. The wind calmly blew through the trees, and I could hear an owl calling somewhere to my right. I walked down the forest trail in silence but something stopped me in my tracks. There was a jack-o'-lantern with a cheerful carved expression sitting there on the side of the trail. I was confused, to say the least. Who would put a jack-o'-lantern out here? Who would they think would see it? I kept walking, mystified by the strangeness of what I'd seen, but I chalked it up to the workings of someone with a bit too much Halloween spirit. As I continued down the trail, I noticed a flickering orange light ahead dancing on the surrounding trees and ground. When I got closer, I realized it was another jack-o'-lantern. But this one was different. Its face wasn't cheery like the last one. It looked nervous, afraid, paranoid even, and not just in a cartoony emoticon sort of way. It looked too real. I could feel the emotion by looking at its face. I began to feel the way that pumpkin looked. Paranoid. I noticed my heartbeat a bit faster. I looked around and behind me and kept walking, now keeping a quicker pace. I can't explain why, but things around me began to seem more disturbing. The shadows of tree branches began to look more and more like outstretched fingers clawing at the trail. The wind began to sound less like a whistle and more like an eerie, drawn-out scream. Noises started to sound more ominous, like the whole forest was out to get me. I thought that was bad. But what I saw next was the last thing I wanted to see. A third jack-o'-lantern. 
This one bore a face that can only be described in one word. And that one word is terror. I could see it. I could feel it. I could practically taste it in my soul. I froze where I stood, jaw hanging open. My heart was racing, my lungs filled and emptied in short succession. I sped along, walking as fast as I could. All I wanted was for this to be over. I was looking left, right, and over my shoulder constantly. Visions of a serial killer in a hockey mask danced through my mind, hiding behind every tree, waiting to jump out and turn me into mincemeat. I thought that maybe I was crazy. Maybe there wasn't anything to worry about. My mind tried to tell me that, but I wasn't convinced. As all these thoughts bounced through my brain, I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't watching the path. Out of nowhere, like a flash of lightning, my foot caught on a root sticking out of the dirt, and I fell face down onto the cold, hard dirt. After a moment, I shook off the initial shock and looked up in front of me. I wish I hadn't. Before me, a mere foot from my face, was a jack-o'-lantern. Its face was pure shock and horror. It had an axe chopped right into its head. There was blood dripping down from the wound. It was real. I could smell it. The metallic stench that blood gives off. At that moment, I swear on my life that my heart stopped. I couldn't look away. I couldn't move. I couldn't scream. I couldn't breathe. Only one thing could break out of my trance of horror. The sound of footsteps rustling in the leaves mere yards behind me. Every fiber of my being told me to do one thing. Run. I scrambled to my feet and ran faster than I ever had in my entire life. I don't think I could ever run that fast again. I swear I could hear footsteps running behind me the whole way home. I looked over my shoulder as I ran out into the street, but nobody was there. When I turned back around to face my house, I saw something strange that made me sick to my stomach. A jack-o'-lantern on my porch that said, Welcome home. I rushed inside and called the police. They didn't find anything in or outside the house. Nothing in the forest, either. I can't explain what happened to me out there in the woods that Halloween night. But one thing is for sure, someone, or something, was following me, and it knows where I live. Hey there guys, this is Master DK. Thank you so much for watching tonight's video. If you like what you hear and you want to hear more, Feel free to explore my channel and hit subscribe if you wish. You can also follow me on Twitter and Facebook for updates. And uh, also consider visiting my Patreon and uh, financially supporting this channel. I have uh, several rewards waiting for people who do so. Any amount that you're willing to give is huge to me and I'll be very grateful. Thank you guys once again and have a safe night.